Ah, bare bottom for a change. Okay, okay, I gotta say, I'm mesmerized by all the chromis hanging out in front of the tank. And I'm curious how many of these he's had for how long? It looks like he's got um, six of them, so a half dozen, I would guess. How long has he had that many, and how many did he start with? Chromists always have a way of whittling themselves down to one, but hey, if he's had this school for a while, more power to him. Loving the action right here in the front of the tank. Tank looks good. Definitely a SPS dominant tank with a nice big old clam sitting out there in the front. Interesting aquascaping. So let me stop with that first. It's this kind of, I call it Super Mario aquascaping toadstool. It's like there's a thing here and a thing here and a thing here. Platforms, in a way it makes sense for SPS. And they've got frag plugs and little holes for the plugs. I get it. It's personally not my look as to me it looks, I mean like if I was, this was a display tank for a store, I could see doing it because it like presents each colony and be easier for the customer to be like, I want that one there. Or if you put your frags on it, that'd be like another way to do a frag tank. Um, not my taste in terms of what I like for aquascaping, but that's just a preference thing. Some people like red cars, some people like black cars, that kind of thing. <clears throat> So we've got a wide variety of SPS here. We got a couple of LPS down on the bottom. We got some frog spawn and um, some gonopora here. Nice compact tank. This is a four foot wide tank. Fits nicely back in this corner between the two windows. Not concerned about the windows causing algae growth. That's a myth. If your nutrients are in line, your tank's happy. You're not all of a sudden gonna get algae growth because you happen to have a window by it. It's a nice place to put this little tank. I mean, it's 200 gallons. It's not like it's that small, but a nice smug, snug place to keep it. We got all kinds of SPS in here. Now, it may just be the, the, the phone that he's filming on. Colors look a, a little washed out for me. SPS colors, coral colors, specifically SPS colors, is the first thing to go and the hardest thing to get back. Again, it's not like these colors are bad. They're just not as rich as they could be. And again, it may be the phone. I'm just calling as I see it. So that may be a nutrient issue. They don't look, the colors don't look bad. The SPS look happy. They got good polyp extension. This tank is obviously doing well, so I'm gonna really get in there and get nitty gritty with this person. I mean, this, but nice size colonies. This clam looks fantastic. Love the placement of the clam right out front. Uh, it looks great, nice squamosa there. Love that clam. Okay, the chromas keep distracting me, I gotta say. I got some LPS down here on the bottom. Is that a mermaid? Can I get her phone number? That's like a meteor shower Sephastria mermaid. <laughs> I love it, and it's encrusted on the bottom so she's not gonna fall over because the last thing you want is your mermaid to fall over. All right, we got some LPS, some gonopora here. Nice flow, look at the flow right here. Looks like that may be some Xenia, I hope not. Looking at this LPS, maybe this Xenia soft coral here. Good flow on this thing. He may have it set up as a gyre. Looks like it flows this direction. I'd like to see it shift. But um, again, this is just me being picky and I'm only looking at it one moment in time. So before we go look at the sump, display ideas overall. He's got a good mix of corals. Sure, the colors could be a little richer on SPS. That's something that like the top 1% of reefers can get and really do well. Keeping SPS is one thing. Keeping them colored up and really richly, richly Colored up is another thing. Again, these aren't bad. They're just not necessarily like as rich as they could be. Looks like he's got a nice uh, big old piece of strawberry shortcake over there as well. Maybe it's just his phone. Either way, the corals look happy. The growth looks good. These aren't just frags. They got some soft corals that I saw over there on the right. So nice looking display. Let's go see what makes this whole system tick. All right, so a basement sump. No one complains when they have a fish room, even if it's in their basement. I'm digging this. Everything looks nice and clean. I'm, or I'm noticing this right off the bat. Organization, the box of salt. He's got his drawers right here with saltwatercrayon.com sticker. Loving that. Buckets, everything is nice and clean. Okay, so some people are gonna say, well, he's got a sump on some cinder blocks. Well, yeah, he does, but he's nice. I like that he's lifted it up. So he's got storage underneath it. Everything is tucked away. Like, this is a nice clean setup. 
Looks like he made a sump out of a tank and it's a big sump as well. I'm guessing this sump is five, probably six feet long, big old refugium area in the middle. And I like that he has some macroalgae in there. That's not just Chato or Calerpa. He's got some in there that's really like a display ornamental type of macro. Skimmers off to the side. Let me go back there. I did notice this. So this is one thing that I'm seeing. So that's an external skimmer, reef octopus skimmer as well. Not, I'm not gonna say that external skimmers are prone to overflowing because that's not true. My concern is if the skimmer overflows, since it is external, it's gonna overflow on this wood shelf, flow down on top of all these supplements and make a mess. Looks like he's got a floor drain there uh, right below that shelf, which is great. So what I would do is build a tray for it, drain that tray down to the floor drain. So if it overflows, it doesn't cause a mess. It goes straight down to the floor drain. Just one little tweak that I would do to this system the sump looks nice and clean though. He's gonna, done a good job of keeping this thing clean. I don't see any big detritus in there. It looks really nice. I like that he has a screen on his return pump over there as well. That's a smart call. We'll get another look at that in a minute. He's got his uh, UV up high, which is a great place to mount that thing. The thing about UVs are to get the tube out and to get the bulb out, you need the same length as the tube. So if the tube looks like this one's a five foot tube, that means you need another five feet beyond it to get the bulb and to get the sleeve out. That's 10 feet of horizontal space that he needs. You put it up on the ceiling, all the space in the world. Good call there. Got some uh, a grow light here. So we've got a refugium in the back and a refugium in the front. That's cool. That lets you keep that invasive chato in the back and your ornamental macros up front. Okay, so here's the screen on the return pump that I like. This is gonna keep any kind of foreign object out of the pump, like look, if some macro gets caught in the pump, it's probably gonna get chewed up, that's one thing. But if a snail happens to get through there, something larger, that can really mess up your pump. Nice Milwaukee return pump there. Very reliable brand, like the Milwaukee's. He's got an apex flow sensor on there. Right after the pump, let him know if anything's going wrong. And it looks like we've got some uh, dosing containers over here as well. Loving the saltwateracorn.com stickers to tell you what's in each container. Looks like we're gonna get a look at a mixing station as well. Like the uh, finger channel to hide all the cords, that's a nice little touch. Nice way to keep your cords accessible, uh, but also get them out of your way. Loving the, uh, the switch box, the manual switch box as well. Having an app on your phone is great, but sometimes you just want a manual switch to get to quickly, or you don't have to dry off your hand uh, and then get to the switch. Looks like we've got a dedicated uh, iPad there for the control center, okay. So we've got control center over here. Some people might be upset they didn't go berserko about his control board. I like that he put some kind of maybe white FRP or even just white plywood behind it. Even took the time to paint it just to spruce it up a little bit. Doesn't have to be very complicated, but a little touch like that makes it look nice. He's got some APC power supply backups there right next to it. I'm curious about the longevity of that in this moist saltwater environment. May not be a big deal. Maybe the owner can chime in on that. So he's got some kind of backup going on, even if it's just gonna run his pumps upstairs, that's something that's better than nothing. You'd be surprised how much time you can get yourself if you just have your in-tank circulation running. Uh, it can really buy you a lot of time when it comes to keeping things rolling in the event of a power outage. So here's a nice basement sump, mixing stations right here on the floor. Everything is clean and collected. Okay, so just one thing that I would personally do, even though it's in a basement, even though we've got a concrete floor, looks like we had a floor drain over there, I would put those water containers in some kind of tray. That way if you spill, it spills in the tray, it doesn't leave a salt water stain on your basement floor. You don't have to do about water running away, going somewhere and then trying to wash down for all the salt. So I'd put these things in a tray, just add a nice little touch, keep everything, keep any spills uh, contained on this basement sump, but it looks good. I really like how he's done a couple little tweaks, like with the control board that's even just painted white plywood, that works. Power backup, he's put some thought into the system, but he hasn't necessarily gone overboard. In terms of building some crazy control panel, looks like we're gonna get a run back. Oh, and then over here we have the RODI unit run into the slop sink. Looks like we got a quarantine tank over here as well. You have a basement, you've got an open ceiling, you've got options. Everything just runs along this uh, duct here along the ceiling. Nice use of space, nice clean setup. Okay, I gotta go back and look at the chromas just one more time. 
Why not? Look at these suckers. Okay, I know they're about to get fed, but still, it's still cool. We got all these fish in here. All right, so I'm looking at the fish. I will say this. We've got some tangs. We got some chromis. I didn't see any wrasses. I didn't see any anthias. Personally, because I like those fish, we've got 200 gallons. I would put in at least a harem, one male, two females, anthias, get some kind of even like flame wrasses as well. Something just to add a little different kind of feel to the tank. Some blennies, Midas blenny that's going to perch on the rocks, not going to hurt your corals. Just to add something a little different to the tank. Just to mix things up a little bit. Looks like we might have one little blenny down there in the left. He might be darting in and out. I would just like to see a little more diversity when it comes to the fish. That's just my personal taste. But he does have a nice mix of tangs that are going to do a good job of mowing down any algae. I'm willing to bet this tank stays very clean because he's got that big refugium downstairs that was growing uh, algae very well. So nice 200 gallon tank put in a great place in the house with a basement sump. A little bit more of a DIY than we're used to seeing. Nothing wrong with that. Some of you have been requesting that. We've got a sump on cinder blocks and wood. Shows that it works. There's lots of ways to skin the cat. And in the end, it's really all about the display. If it's getting you where you want to go and it makes it an easy to set, easy to work on, easy to service setup, that's going to go a long way for you being happy with your tank. Thank mm -hmm. you.